All right, this video is going to um, encompass basically a start to finish of a custom fly rod. Now, um, just to start off, I built fly rods in the past, but this one's going to be mine. Um, and that's what's nice about doing custom is you can basically uh, customize a rod. I mean, stands it's obvious. Um, but I'm going to do a couple first in this video, and I'm going to make it kind of into a series of parts to handles to uh, turning a handle to setting up how to you know just a whole encompass of everything from start to finish so this is going to be a series of videos for that um, basically I'm using a eight foot six inch um, fly rod it's a four piece and um, you know as you can see the components here here's a snake guide here's a regular guide now I'm going with a the blue theme if you can't tell you know that's blue the real seat blue um, even the hook keeper down here, it's a large hook keeper, that's blue. So I'm going to kind of go with a blue theme on this one. But basically this is going to be a start to finish video and a series of videos. And um, just to show you real quick, one of the other reasons why I did custom, this is actually uh, a reverse half wells grip. It's a specific type of um, uh, grip that you use when fly fishing. There's different types of grips. This is a reverse half wells grip. Anyway. I had this grip and you know it's a seven inch grip the rail seat you know the hood right here fits inside of the grip and that's how it's supposed to sit everything like that but I don't like it's it's small it's skinny for my hand I don't like the feel of it it kind of feels like a pencil almost it, I, I just don't like it so in this video too you know this is going to be a first and you guys are going to follow along with me on this I'm going to make my own grip um, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that I've learned. I've never made one before. Um, I have a whole bunch of cork, individual pieces of cork that I've purchased throughout the years, just from you know random sales here and there, quality grade aid cork. But I've never actually built a custom handle. I've built a lot of custom rods, just never custom handles. So that's going to be a first for me, and you guys are going to follow along with this. This is kind of the pattern I'm going for when it comes to the custom handle. You know, something like that. Uh, I'll go more into depth of this later, but it's still seven inches total length, but it's going to be a little bit more meatier than just the, you know, one you can buy from a store or from online. So, right now I'm going to head, head, head over to the um, one of the essential tools I think that if you're going to do a custom grip like this you're going to need and that's going to be the drill right, press. Alright, so we're over here at the drill press and I just want to go over some tips and tricks when it comes to making your own handle. These aren't necessarily my uh, ideas when it comes to this but you know through research and through reading I've come to find this is the easiest way to do it whenever you're making a custom handle. So basically what I want to talk about here is this is a piece of I think half inch or three quarter piece of just particle board. It's cabinet grade particle board that I had lying around and I have it attached to my drill press and as you can see there's a little hole here that I've already drilled out with the drill press and what that's for is to accept your piece of cork. You can see how that cork fits in there like that. You need to secure this piece of cork. Just to back up a little bit I guess this piece of cork will be the very end of my grip. So as you can see from this grip, this piece of cork right here is, you know, hollowed out. And I guess if I hold these side by side, this piece of cork represents this piece of cork right here. Since I'm making custom, you know, this is what this is. This piece of cork is going to be this. And now, why this is reamed out is to accept when you're doing a fly rod, this hood here on your reel seat sits in like that. So that's why that's reamed out like that. So this is essential. You must ream out the first cork or hollow out the first cork to accept the hood of your reel seat. I drilled out, I guess, this piece of board to accept this piece of cork. And I got lucky. All you need is basically a, you know, a spade bit, but this piece of cork measured at a good, good pair of handy piece of calipers are coming very handy too. Let's just do this in millimeters, which we're on. But this piece of cork measures out at about 31.76 millimeters. That's a little bit tight. So I got lucky because an inch and a quarter spade bit measures out just under 
about 31.76 millimeters. So that's tight right there. 31.76 and our piece of cork was 31.84. So it's very, it's not that far off when it comes to measurements. So what you want to do to start is you want to at least take your piece of board, your piece of wood, whatever it is, particle board, like I said this is grade cabinetry wood, get a bit, a spade bit that is very close to the diameter of your cork. And now what that allows is to accept that cork into that piece of wood to where it's nice and tight and fit and it's not moving anywhere. That's really tight. This is essential when you have to remount the center of the cork with another spade bit. Now let me back up a little bit. If you can't get exact measurements, meaning the circumference of your cork and the part you, you know, the, the particle board itself when you drill it out with the spade bit, I found that you can go a little bit bigger while drilling out of your board and you can use a piece of tape to make up that difference. Here's just a piece I mess with to you know, make sure all my measurements were correct and exact before I actually did the piece I'm gonna do right now. But this piece of cork right here, the circumference was minuscule, but it was smaller than the inside of this hole. And the cork you know, tended to chatter. It would shake, it would turn with a bit and everything. So if you put a piece of masking tape around there just to accept it, you want that tight. You don't want it super tight where you're just forcing it in, but you want it tight enough where it's not gonna move around. So, once you do that, once you have your whole drill to accept your piece of cork, even this piece of cork, this is another piece of cork, you can see there's some play in there. If I was reaming this out, I'd take a piece of masking tape and just run around just to keep it, you know, allow it to sit tighter. So what we want to do with this piece of cork right here, the one that we have fitted that's going to be, accept our real seat, is we want to measure the circumference of the real seat hood itself. And by doing that, you can see about 20.94 millimeters. I have in here, what is it, a 13 16 spade bit right here? And if I measure that out, 20.47 millimeters. So that's going to be very, very, very close. So it's going to be very tight. It's going to be a little bit heavier but that's okay because we can build up and you want um, a little bit more play whenever you ream this out to accept your bond, your epoxy. So I'm gonna get started, I'm gonna drill this out and just from doing a couple already, you want this to be perfectly, if not perfectly centered, very close I should say, and that's perfectly centered to the inside of your cork because that'll allow for the best center cut you can get with this drill, this spade bit. So, I have my depth set, which is another in its own. Let me just show you real quick with my calipers here. The depth that I want to go is basically this section of the of the reel seat. So if I measure that, just get, we'll just go heavy a little bit. Well, let's go a little light. So we're looking at 9 point, uh, right there, we'll say 8.90 millimeters. So I have that all set already with my depth gauge on my drill press here. So I'm going to go about, I'd say a little bit less than 8 millimeters. And then, because you can always drill more out instead of putting more back. So we're going to go a little bit less, check it against our rail seat, and then we're going to, if we had to take out more, we will. So I'm going to fire up the drill press here and... gauge hit. So I'm going to take this out and be gentle. This is only cork. I mean don't go nuts with it. I'm going to take that out a little bit. I'm going to check it against my hood here. And I can go a lot more. See what I mean? I, I, it was, I was okay with taking um, you know less out because I, I can always drill more out. So I'm going to adjust my depth gauge here and take another run at it.
just a hair more. I mean, just a little bit more, and I'll, I'll be dead, dead set. Adjust my depth gauge. Here. be gentle because this is taking a lot of that cork out there's not a whole lot of material in there already in those sides oh yeah that's good right there I'm not gonna get much better than that as you can see that's a nice fit there is some play which is fine because I'm gonna put rod bond in there that expands and I'm also gonna scuff this up a little bit so it, the rod bond has something to bond to so that's good I'm happy with that and looks pretty dead center you know as far as the rim and the the uh, I guess equal distance of this rim looks good, so that's pretty center. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so we got our piece of uh, cork reamed out here, and it fits nicely in our real seat. Um, so basically, we're going to set that aside for now and move these parts out of the way a little bit. Next, what we're going to do is glue these corks together to where, um, actually this one can come off, so now what we're going to do is we're going to glue all these corks together and then we're going to turn it down in a sense, we're going to uh, sand all this to where we have our grip that we're looking for our nice you know our, our custom feel of our grip to where what we're going to do here so um, just to start off this is just a, a, a lot of your centers of your cork are going to be half inch this is just a half inch rod I had laying around that's going to allow me to kind of mimic what I want to go for when it comes to the rod itself you know my handle so I can lay everything out if I want to change something around, I just replace it. You know, I, I, I can see the actual look of the grip instead of fighting the corks, you know, laying them out, having them roll everywhere. But um, what we're going to do is, this is just a template. We're going to glue all these together, and then I'm going to go get a part right now and talk about what that part is for. So this is called a rod clamp and or handle clamp rod clamp whatever you want to call it and basically what the, the purpose this serves is it clamps your pieces of cork together when they're glued it clamps it together keeps it nice and tight for when it's drying after you glue it and I just use regular wood glue I, I know guys who use you know doing research five minute epoxy and um, you know rod bond glue but I found wood glue working with a couple templates here you know just doing some trials to work very well I mean wood glue is strong stuff but I want to talk about this this all this, I made this I'm all about making it if you can make it more power to you I, I I made my you know rod my rod wrapper you know my thread wrapper I made this I mean you know I, I'm all about making stuff which all of this is is just a piece of all thread that I cut to I don't even know what this is just a guess this is about 12 a foot long so I got two feet of all thread um, cut it in half. I had like a, this is the same cabinet wood I just used to drill out for my cork. Cut these, drilled three holes in each. Just foot piece, a uh, two foot piece of all thread that I cut in half. Um, four nuts, one for each end. Two washers, one on each end, and a piece. This is the same piece of wood that uh, cabinet wood that I used to showed you on the drill press there to accept my cork for when I was drilling that out with a couple wing nuts. It, it, they sell these online. I think the cheapest I found was probably 15 bucks. But <laughs> other than buying the all thread because they didn't have any, I had everything else. So I think there's a, I have a dollar invested into this. It's not, if you can make it more power to you, that's one of the reasons why I like to do custom rods. I'm making it, I'm using it. It's to my liking, it's to my specs. Same with tools. If I can make it, I'm gonna use it. So. Basically all this is for, and I'll just show you real quick, cork goes in here, you bring your other half of your clamp, and you tighten it down after you glue it, and it com 
compresses, you know, the cork together so it glues evenly. You know, it, it dries evenly, it glues evenly. The cork isn't cantered to one side or the other. It clamps it together when you glue it. And like I said, all you, all I use is wood glue, which I'll show you when I glue these together. I'll just put a little bit on each end, you know, an end of the cork here, and I will, as I put it on, just twist it a little bit, go to the next one, vice versa, do the whole row, you're done. Clamp it, put your wing nuts on, and uh, go to town. So I'll start doing that. I'm pretty happy with this design, so I'm going to start doing that piece of the cork of gluing it all together and show you guys. What you want to do if you're going to turn your own cork is this is a 5 16th. Um, diameter rod and it's actually if I show you it's actually a wood drill bit here that I use um, like I said I'm all for doing it myself if I don't have to go out I had this laying around I'm gonna use it I'm not gonna go buy something I'm not cheap don't get me wrong but if I can repurpose something I'm gonna do it but like I said this is a piece of 5 16 it's just steel rod it's a drill bit whatever um, I'm going to thread my cork onto here because this is what I'm actually going to use to turn whenever on my, uh, I'll show you that later. I'm going to use this part to turn to sand down my cork handle. Before you do that though, what you want to do is, this is a piece of paraffin wax, um, you want to coat the uh, steel rod you're using. I'm basically going to transfer the pattern of cork that I have on that half inch steel rod onto this 5 16 so I'm not going to do that on camera I'll do it and get back okay I have all my cork on my 5 16 uh, rod here it's just regular wood glue and I'm putting a little bit on each just a little bit I don't know if you can see how much is on there. There's not a whole lot. You know, work it around a little. Just bring the one above it down and twist it as you apply it. You don't want to go crazy with the amount of glue you're putting on. I mean, I can see just there's some sque squeezing out there. That's plenty. So I'm going to do this to each individual piece of cork. Put that on there just a little bit. Just work it around bring the one cork from above down and twist as you apply to really work that glue into those two pieces of cork you can see I got some seepage just clean it up a little now clean it up now because you're just going to deal with sanding it later so I'm going to do that to each one of these pieces of cork and I think that's enough information for this video um, the next video is probably just going to be me turning the cork, turning the handle itself down to the shape I want, um, to the thickness I want, and showing you how or what my plan is to do that. So stick around for, I guess it'll be part two of the series of videos of customizing your own fly rod.